Ishik, Ishik. What is it here, Haberday? What does it say? It is an account of a conversation between Ebgar, King of Edessa. When Jesus, the Christ, It was a stone lintel, the crosspiece of a door, with carved letters that relayed an amazing story. The story was not unknown to scholars, but here was fresh evidence of its truth. There is a large lintel. On it is a huge inscription which gives an ancient story of King Abgar, who belongs to Edessa in Mesopotamia. He writes to Jesus because he has a physical problem that had not been relieved and asks if Jesus could come and heal him. We don't find a lot of inscriptions with the name of Jesus on them from the late Roman period, unless they're church inscriptions and you know you're digging in a church. And this wasn't the case. They knew they were digging in private houses. So already right there on the first day, they knew that they had something a little out of the ordinary. There are many secrets that history has kept about King Abgar. No one knows the nature of his illness. <coughs> but his condition was desperate. Three recorded sources refer to King Abgar. The first comes from the chief historian of the early church. In 313 AD, Eusebius claims to have seen actual letters written between Abgar and Jesus, which were archived in Edessa. A second reference comes from the Chronicles of Adai, which dates to about 390 AD. And the third document is from a most remarkable woman on a pilgrimage. I will mention this next witness, the name of which is Eteria or Egeria. And uh, she spent some years, also in the fourth century, in, in the east, coming from the west, probably from Europe, uh, France, Spain, Switzerland. We don't know exactly where she came from. Uh, and uh, she is uh, writing her own travel memoirs and she said, I spent three years in Jerusalem because she wanted to be on all the holy sites where Jesus had been. Egeria returned home from her travels, but not before making one fateful visit to Edessa. There, in the archives, she claims to have seen the very same letters reported in the church history. Eusebius, Adai, Egeria, the story of King Abgar is shared between them. But the mystery remains. How could the king of Edessa, so far removed from Jerusalem, come to believe in a Messiah he had never seen? How could he contact Jesus? And how could Jesus respond with his crucifixion so close at hand? We have the harvest. Abundant, my liege. Good. We're blessed. And the people celebrate. Quietly. They fear for their kingdom. Even more for their king. Nothing has been said officially, but... <laughs> it is the curse of those who live in palaces to think they can hide the truth. What of our soldiers? To a man, we would die for you. Yes, but the battle has moved. 
None of us are trained for this enemy. <coughs> what of the search party? Hanan could not be found. Is Hanan, who was a, a civil servant of a high uh, level for the king. He was responsible of the archives and he was at the same time part of the group of diplomats sent for this discussion with the, with the Romans. But beyond Rome, Hanan had felt compelled to Jerusalem. News from Odessa? King Abgar is ill, and I'm overdue to return. I fear for his life. You're not a Dessen by race or culture. I wish I had servants so loyal. Are you well, Gamaliel? I will be as soon as my city stops its fascination with Jesus of Nazareth. The priests are divided. The poor rise up. And the Romans reach for their swords. What brought you here? So news of Jesus has reached beyond the Euphrates. They say he heals without herbs or medicine. He gives sight to men born blind. The deaf hear, the lame walk. There was a man, three days in a tomb. Jesus called him forth from death. The dead man's face was still wrapped in cloth. Then you have your witness. Go discuss it with him. It's all true. If you could deny it, there'd be no division in the temple, no threat from Rome. The wonders Jesus works cannot keep pace with the enemies he is making. Will you defend him to the council? Ride swiftly, my friend. Gamaliel was a Pharisee and one of the great elders and Jewish leaders of the Sanhedrin, which constituted 71 Jewish men who were the ones who would develop Jewish law and settle major court cases. As one of the leaders, he was one who had a sense of history. He could see that there had been false messiahs in the last century who had led people away. And so he would look and say, if this is of men, this whole movement about Jesus, it will fall away like the others and come to nothing. But if it is of God, we must be careful because we will find ourselves even fighting against God. There is a matter I had to search you out. You went to Jerusalem while our king lay dying? I could not come back with only rumor and hearsay. I needed facts. Which are? Come. We'll discuss them together. I hope they're true for his sake. And yours. It is no dream. Every traveler on the road to Edessa and all men in our fields urgently ask about you. A son of Edessa would not have kept the king waiting. There is a healer in Jerusalem. There is a healer in, in all cities, and none have done us any good. Abdul, would I lightly stir the hopes of my king? They call him Jesus of Nazareth. He gave sight to a man born blind. He fed a crowd of 5,000, dividing a few loaves and some fish. If that were true, he would be made king by force. No. He resists any title. The only kingdom that concerns him is that of his father in heaven. His price to heal? As best I know, he asks nothing. He owns nothing. He has no home. My liege, he raised a man from the dead. The whole of Jerusalem is beside itself. There is none who can restore life to the dead but God alone. 
I must go to Jerusalem. My king, no, you cannot. I must go. Seek my healing from this Jesus. And return to the service of my people. You do not have the strength for a ride like that. Better to die on the road than in this bed. It would be a deep offense to Caesar for the king of Edessa to cross that territory. I'll send Rome a courier. He would be executed as a spy. Anon. Anon, what do I do? I'm told this Jesus says that with faith, all things are possible. Faith. So that's where the battle is moved. It would be easier to lay siege to a city. I know my king has the courage to believe. Garuchama, the Topark, to Jesus, the good Savior who has appeared in the district of Jerusalem. Greetings. I have heard concerning you and your cures and how they are accomplished by you without drugs or herbs. For as the story goes, you make the blind recover their sight, the lame walk, and you cleanse lepers and cast out unclean spirits and demons and you cure those who are tortured by long disease and you raise dead men and when I heard all these things concerning you I decided that it is one of the two either that you are God and came down from heaven to do these things or a son of God for doing these things. For this reason, I write to beg you to hasten to me and to heal the suffering which I have. Abgar's letter was vouchsafed to Hanan, who returned to Jerusalem, but the betrayal of Jesus was near at hand. I'm Hanan from Edessa. I'm the king's archive. We can fit no more. I run a household here, not a coliseum. I don't need lodging. Another fact-finding mission. I know he's in here. Come, Elil. Even if you have no faith in him, do not deny others the chance to believe. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but will have the light of life. I tell you the truth. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. It is likely that Abgar's appeal to Jesus was written, but what of Jesus' response? Tradition says that he wrote nothing, that others recorded his teaching. What then did Eusebius find in the archives of Edessa so many centuries ago? Not all the documents have a written answer of Jesus. In one of the documents, it is an oral answer of Jesus uh, through Hanan. 
we have to think about the Abgar correspondence and actually every text of early Christianity swimming in this whole sea of oral tradition, of things that people still remembered firsthand or secondhand or even thirdhand about Jesus and his disciples and during the time that they lived. Jesus said, I must first complete here all for which I was sent. And after completing it, be taken up to him who sent me. And when I have been taken up, I will send to you one of my disciples to heal your suffering. Send a disciple? Yes. When? He didn't say. Did he understand our king's desperate condition? Abdul, we asked for healing. He promised healing. While there is still time left to heal! Where there is faith, there is time enough. After Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit had descended upon the apostles, they went forth to many different areas of the Roman Empire, Antioch, Alexandria, Rome itself. And as they did, there were two major elements of their proclamation of the gospel. First was the preaching, the preaching of going to leaders and others who would wonder about what this new radical movement was all about. The second was their own fellowship. They had care for one another, and so during times of famine or pestilence, they were part of the diaspora that went out and talked to other people and helped other people. And so when you find that Thaddeus goes to Edessa, you find that there is both the invitation to come and share the gospel, but also to bring the care and the love that was known in Jesus Christ. People knew that they were Jesus' disciples when they had love for one another and love for others. In Gamaliel's courtyard, Thaddeus, a follower of Jesus, listened to his master. Hanan could never have known that this simple man would bring the answer to Abgar's plea. Something greater than my condition troubles you. The people are anxious for your healing because they do not think I'm ready to rule. Are you? I'm not ready to lose my king. You have too much yet to give. And I have too much to learn. I've just learned of a man here in Edessa. People in the market say he has the power to heal. Our own citizen? No, from Jerusalem. My king, he says he comes in the name of Jesus. Summon this man. Tobias, son of Tobias. Yes, I know him. Tobias from Palestine. Yes, yes. Stand vigil over the king. Prepare the royal canopy in the throne room. Alert the court. Tobias? My house is not worthy of royalty. I'll get some refreshments. The princes of Edessa are well fed. Perhaps some wine to cheer us? Where is he? The throne has nothing to fear from my guest. Tell me who and where he is. My name is Thaddeus. He has been dispatched by the Apostle Thomas to Edessa, and he arrives like an angel from God. You are the healer? I come in the healer's name. My king is ravished by illness and worn with false hope. The victim of charlatans and soothsayers would bleed our royal treasury. Keep your money. I come in the name of Jesus Christ, who has gone to his Father in heaven, who does what no other can do. We haven't much time. I think that Jesus' healing power is important to remember in the Gospel of Luke. Jesus is presented not only as a prophet, not only as a Messiah, not only as a Lord, but also as a physician. Laying on of hands begins with a Jewish tradition where the father will bless his son 
And so Jacob takes Joseph and puts his hands upon him and gives him a blessing and sends him forth. Jesus, in a similar way, would take his hands upon little children and bless them. But he would also touch people, and by touching them, he would bring healing to them. The church itself begins to lay on hands for not only healing, but also for commissioning, to send people out. When Paul is sent out, the elders lay their hands upon him and sent him forth. And so there's this wonderful power of the touch of God coming through people's hands to minister to other people. Miracles punctuated the power of the message of the gospel. If the gospel is true, and if Jesus was resurrected from the dead, then there are going to be other signs and wonders that follow this message. And what we find is that the disciples were empowered by the Holy Spirit to lay their hands on people and bring about healing. What's fascinating is that in the book of Acts, you have Simon, the sorcerer, who wants to buy this power of laying on of hands because he sees transformation going. And so simony becomes a major vice of the Middle Ages where people want to buy the power of the church, and it's not for sale. But here we find that God gives through people like Thaddeus the ability to minister, to anoint, to heal, and to commission others. And so the gospel goes forth. What of the man in the market? Prince Abdu of Edessa. those who have never seen and yet believe. I have such faith as to have stopped his death that room allotted. Would you have stopped the spilling of blood that now brings your salvation? For this cause, I lay my hand on you in his name.
Stan. Stan. Why bow to royalty when God works miracles through common men? Now, let us listen to Thaddeus and the whole of the gospel that he brings. Brethren. And when I heard all these things concerning you, I decided that it is one of the two, either that you are God and came down from heaven to do these things, or a son of God for doing these things. <laughs> 